In this week's episode of the Just Went Podcast, we get to speak to a lady who has gone from running 5Ks to winning 200 mile races. She also runs with rheumatoid arthritis. This week, we speak to Michelle White. Hello and welcome to episode 22 of the Just Run podcast with me, Rhys Morgan. And me, Nathan Marshall. This week we have Shell White with us, also known as Little Runner Shell on Instagram, as most of you probably know. Uh, she's no stranger to running and um, the ultra world. She's run multiple 100 mile distances and even conquered 200 miles in an amazing fashion. But I'm not going to spoil that story. I'll let her go into that during the episode. Um, first and foremost, we're just going to have a little introduction as we normally do. So, Nate, uh, just haven't chat with you since last week and since we did the opponent debrief. What's new in your world, mate? Any gossip? Any Wales coastal path? Juicy stuff? Not much, to be honest. Um, I had my last hard session today and it was like an hour and 15 on the Stairmaster. Um, so that's it now, done with all the like miserable shit. It was just <laughs> about um, rehab now and so like just stretching and just keeping things taking over quite nice um in terms of the podcast though um we've now got a site where sponsors can now get involved with the podcast um, Wow! i know i don't think i've really told you have i no it's, this is it's, hysterical yeah. like... <laughs> well i like i sent you the link last week about it and so i set it up so we're just it's all live and then sponsors can sort of like get involved and what the agency actually liked was the fact that because they cover loads of like local sports teams and they get they've got like 25 million quid worth of like funding for these teams and they said that all these teams don't have the backing and the um the level of like spread like we've got like <laughs> 34 countries we're in like each week mm-hmm. we're getting like impressions of like twenty thousand on Spotify mm-hmm. and YouTube. It's just it's just fucking nuts. And it, it gives mm-hmm. us a le- it gives us decent leverage towards uh, sponsorship. So we yeah. now have um ways people can sponsor an episode. They can sponsor um like get involved in Welsh Coastal Path. Um and mm-hmm. they, they can also get involved and be a sponsor for your Ultra X as well. So that's oh, all wow. set up, ready to go. So hopefully Amazing. we can get you the funding to uh, fuck off around the world. <laughs> yeah, give my wife a break from me. That'd be nice. That'd be amazing. Wicked. Oh, nice one for sorting that, mate. Actually, on the subject of Ultra X, I haven't spoken about that since, have I? You do know. I think I've told you. I'm like, you're probably the only person I have told. Um, obviously, I, I was due to run Snickle Project 13, which involves running all of Ultra X's runs starting in Rwanda in January all over the world. I am still doing it, but there's been a slight shift and change and it's going to be now in 2026. So I've got the remainder of this year and I've got all of next year to basically do what Nathan's just said, like try and sort as much sponsorship and funding as I can to help me get to the start lines um, and obviously raise as much awareness as possible and funds for cancer research and network with them and their press and their social teams. I've been speaking to my friend who works for them this week. She's on my case about it. Um, and yeah, just try and generate as much interest around it as possible. So that'd be really good if we if uh, they can reach out and help. All the better for nothing. But nice one for um, sorting that. It's hysterical that I literally had no idea. <laughs> I mean, we've spoken about it, but yeah, that's awesome. That's really so I good. Think, I think a lot of people don't realise that it's not just like going out and training for these events. Um, it's also the financial impact it has on us. Like, we'll probably hear off Shell as well um, how mm-hmm. much these events and these runs cost us to uh, set up. Because you think about fueling, for example. Um, I worked it out. I'd, I'd need just about 90 quid just in electrolytes to cover my uh, week. That's not including the gels or anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well... And that's, well, yeah, I mean, the, the opponent, and again, when we uh, introduced Shell Nail, I mean, she'll be familiar with this as well. Anybody who does long distance running and stuff, it's 
It is, and it's unfortunate because the cost is what prohibits people from actually doing what they want to do. There's so many runs that I would love to do. I'd love to do. I just cannot financially. I mean, I, I, I unfortunately live, you know, paycheck to paycheck as, as most families do nowadays, you know, with nursery fees and rent and everything. That's the reality of it. And I would love nothing more than to be able to drop, you know, five, ten grand on this Ultra X challenge and just go, yeah, cool, wicked. I'll do them all. It's just not feasible and um yeah it's it's not just about having a pair of trainers and, a, and some decent kit this financial backing um i mean for a poner alone i spent well over 100 pound on on just yeah gels food snacks drinks you know mandatory kit things and that was just for one run so yeah you consider these multi-day events and what you and shella you know have done and stuff it's you know it's it's bonkers and um there are some like there's a really good instagram page i think um ultra demo has something to do with it i can never remember the name of it and he always posts about events that are free and like um you know how they, they keep you posted on various events that are either really low cost or free and they're really good i mean but then i also get it because it's a double-edged sword you know you've got to think these people who run these these ultra companies like pegasus the reese champions and all these they're not cheap to run you know when you when you factor in all the expense involved so i get it um but i do think that there are a lot of companies who, who are taking the piss a little bit and um it's it's a it's a struggle and it completely stops you on you know on the spot so hopefully with sponsors behind us and everything like that maybe even we can help other people you know tip off those bucket list roosts who knows yeah They're really good it'd be great um i also had a phone call today with um so an agency to help me develop an app for running oh. so um i want to create an app which allows you to like post up. so for example i'm going for a 10k run this time in this area does anyone want to join me and then mm. it goes out or all your details are like hidden and then people can accept and you can say, yeah, I accept and you can come join me. Cool. That's a wicked but, idea. Because yeah. I was thinking about so like the episode we did around women's safety and everything and mm. how women are too scared to go out running in the dark. Mm. So wouldn't, wouldn't it be great to have an app where everyone was vetted, mm. um, everyone's identity was who they are, and it, mm. it was up to the person running to accept them going out for a run with them. Yeah, yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah, yeah, particularly for women. Obviously, yeah, I don't really like running the nights either. So, yeah, either, but I mean, if you're not really comfortable, or, you know, joining a big running club or you're not part of a club or you're new to the scene and you don't know about, you know, running routes or clubs, yeah, that'd be class. I mean, that'd be really good. Yeah, well, excuse the pun, but... Run with it. <laughs> yeah, so cl clubs can actually use it for themselves as like a group app. Um, it could be used for cycling, anything really, anything out outdoor where you just don't want to go on your own. That'd be so, amazing. Um, yeah, yeah they're, they're helping me develop it to get to a stage where we can put it in front of investors. Um, in the meantime, we've got the lovely Shell waiting in the background there, so uh, very patiently. So sorry to keep you waiting, Shell. Uh, <laughs> we're going to bring you in now. W w welcome to the podcast. Oh, lovely. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Thank you for waiting patiently when me and Nathan get talking this. Uh, yeah, we have to kind of rein it in sometimes. But uh, thank you very much for having you on. And um, I guess uh, before we dive into all of your amazing achievements, because you've got several of them, um, just want to know, I mean, because obviously the first time I'm actually speaking to you as well, I've never met you in person. Um, and for any of the listeners as well, I just want to know more about you really as a person and Running aside, can you can you tell us and the listeners who is Shell White other than running? What what do you do in your spare time? What makes you tick? That type of thing. Can you tell us a bit about yourself? Um, so I am a mum of five. 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 <laughs> wow. Awesome. Okay. They're all grown up though. Um, so the youngest two are twenty two. And the oldest okay. is 30, so, wow. yeah. Okay. So that kept me busy for a long time. Before, and I didn't run at that point, <laughs> obviously. Um, I work full-time, nights. Um, I'm 52. 
old bird. <laughs> um, and I've only really been running two, 15, nine years. Um, and I started off as 5K uh, Race for Life, and then a 10K Race for Life the following year. Um, and then decided I was going to do London. But obviously, you don't know, no one gets in on the ballot. Um, but um, I trained anyway and booked a half marathon, and one led to another, and then to a marathon. And then um, during um, marathon training, I got poorly and got diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis. So it stopped mm. me running for a good year and a half um, because of the medication caused issues. Um, and then I started running again got straight back into um marathons and then um, done an ultra just to see if I could well <laughs> I was going to do an ultra and it got cancelled two days before um and then found another one absolutely hundreds of miles away and luckily hubby took me there um, and it's like a relay one, or you could do it as a team. I had no relay because um, the Cotswold one would have been a relay. Um, so I I rocked up there and done it solo um, and come second. <laughs> as, as, as you do, like, you know, you know after all that as well. Um, well, come, come back to the rheumatoid arthritis as well. I think I'd love to obviously touch about that and, and talk to you about that a bit more. But I'm curious, you know, when obviously... You said you, you haven't been running that long. I mean, you're probably running for a lot with, with five kids. They probably kept on your toes, that's for sure. But um, I'm interested. Obviously, you started 5K and everything. Um, you've had a bit of time off. What was it like when you came back after a year and a half off with running? What what were the struggles like? How, was it difficult mentally to get back into it, or were you really missing it? No, um, it made me determined because... Um, Obviously, um, long story short, with the RA, um, you go on, it's an immune problem. So my immune system's overactive, so it fights my body um, and unfortunately my joints. Um, so they put you on um, immune suppressants, which is chemo. So I was on low dose mm. chemo for a year and a half, um, not realizing, because I was still running to start off with, um, it lowers your bone density. So I ended up, um, with a fracture in my pelvis front and back and my right femur oh, because no. the bones had thinned yeah no one had told me and they kept saying every time I went to the hospital with in pain they kept saying oh it's just your RA <laughs> just your RA and it wasn't until they'd done an MRI and they're like oh dear so that's what put me out for a year and a half and I was told I'd probably never run again and uh, I think when I went out for that first run it's like I am <laughs> wow. you know, as soon as I felt okay and, and that's how I I still prove in that point, you know? Yeah. Basically I mean, enough. that's that's crazy. Well, I suppose whilst we're on it, I was going to come back to it, but I mean, it is such an important topic. I mean, as long as you don't mind discussing it, obviously. No. I mean, in terms of, of that now and the RA and everything and the treatment, how do you how do you handle flare-ups and stuff during races or, um, um, well, training sessions, but races now? Is that why your body's know? always hot then, Shell? Because you're like... Your immune system is heightened all the time, then, is it? Yeah, basically. I think that's another reason why I run hot is is because when I'm on a flare-up, my joints are like they're on fire. It's 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 really hard to explain. It's kind of like so someone's put a really hot poker in my joint, and then when I move it, it's 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 not nice. Um, I I stopped the chemo um after that year and a half because I'd rather because. The chemo didn't, I didn't feel good. You know, I felt rubbish, um, tired, sick all the time. And in the end, I thought, do you know what? I just rather put up with the pain. Um, and the more I ran, the less pain I got, believe it or mm. not. Um, and I have a doctor that told me off, telling me that I was doing damage. And another one said, well, running automatically and naturally immune lowers your immune system so by doing it naturally it's helping so well that's yeah. insane <laughs> the thing is if this is i used to do um like when i, I used to go to a, a different gym a long time ago in newport where i'm from um and 
the guy I was really friendly with, um, he was the PT, he was the owner of the gym as well. And he used to have one of his most committed um, clients, or if you want to say, was a lady about your age who had um, chronic arthritis in her back. And she she was, it might have been the same, I'm not sure. I didn't get the whole story, but I would hear her talk about it with him. And she said as well that she would have bollocks off doctors for training them, but the pace that she was. But she said that I'm in more pain when I don't train than when I do. When a lot of people, that doesn't, people can't seem to like make sense of that. But it, it, for me, it's something I've always, always, always said. It, it's movement. Like if, if you're moving and stuff and your joints and everything are warm, you're going to be in pain, but it's probably going to hurt far less than if you're sat still or sedentary and then your body season up. So is it, that's probably what it is, I'd imagine, is it, when you're training? Yeah, Um it is so like it's not bad at the moment um but sometimes you know if i go to bed and i sleep in a certain position because mm. i've not moved all night i'll wake up and i'm sort of not stuck in that position but it's like getting out of that position is isn't good when i was really bad um when i was before i was diagnosed you know if i was in fetal position i'd be walking to the bathroom still in that fetal position you know because mm. it's just it i mean i'm really lucky i mean I've, I've, I don't, you know, you know, I'm, you know, I know people diagnosed similar time that have walking aids and, and everything else. And I, and I always think in my head that maybe if I didn't do what I do, then I would be possibly that way as well. So I kind of, mm. and, and there are now studies that say that the, um, the movement and, you know, strengthening muscles and everything else is, is is recognized in helping for with the rheumatoid arthritis so the americans have done mm. some great studies so it looks like i've done the right thing <laughs> yeah so is that why you make so much me. last year sorry you, is that why, why you ran so much last year because didn't you cover like four thousand miles this year yeah and the year before it's just oh, natural. Jesus. <laughs> i just ran <laughs> i just ran it's just as soon as I was able to run again, I ran. Uh, well, talk talk us through your week then, shall? Um, what sort of mileage do you get in a week? 80 to 100. <laughs> Tell your kids a cloner. <laughs> well, at least it wouldn't follow me. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. That is. And what do you do? Do you mix up your training like 80 to 100 miles? Um, is it like you know your bog stamp? I say bog standard, but you know like you you mixing up the different runs throughout the week, like different tempo and stuff. And on the weekend, you do a long one, or or do you just do it as you feel? Just run. I just forest gump it. I just run. I love it. I love it. This is like <laughs> a perfect advertisement for the podcast. You've said I like, just run so many times. Like I feel like we can, you, we can have so many little snippets to put on Instagram of you saying that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I have no, you know, I I did um, have a coach and I was, you know, like when they say, you know, um, do so many miles at this, so many miles at that, so many, this speed at this pace, I couldn't see me watch, mate. So how am I supposed to <laughs> you know what a speed I'm running at? So running on Phil <laughs> is, is just the way I do it and I can't get away from that, unfortunately. <laughs> I think it's important for people at our age to run how, how they feel. Is if you follow the plan, we'll be following a plan for like a a twenty five year old who's a who's an elite runner. Because I've seen some of these plans; they're just insane. Yeah, you so gotta go by feel. Gotta go by feel. But the, the that's the best comment from Michelle. Then I couldn't see my watch. <laughs> that's the best. <laughs> That is the best. I can't, I can't do it, boy, because I can't see my bloody watch. That's no, boring. I couldn't. Honest to God. I mean, that's why I get lost on races, is I can't see the map. So <laughs> I'm going I'm to come back to that because I have done a bit of research and I'll come back to that later on. But I think, um, well, probably another thing that we, we have to touch on is, I mean, you've done loads of races, but the Wild Horse 200, I mean, Weren't you using that as just a training run for your FKT attempt? And then <laughs> you didn't just finish it. You stomped across the line and took first female. What's, what's that all about? <laughs> it, was, it was a training run. And, and, and you, and I, like, tell us about that whole race. Like, that, I bet that must have been unbelievable. Um, I don't know. Um, 
if you ask Reese, I nearly quit on the first checkpoint. Um, my biggest thing is getting lost. Um, and I and I do it, and I get quite anxious. So when I was wrecking for the art, the first time I went on my own, I got massive. When I say massively lost, I ended up climbing up a cliff, and I was wandering round and round and round, not knowing where I was. And then it started to get dark. I was only going out for a couple of hours, and obviously gone a long time. And it got to the point like, do we call search and rescue? Because and I was just in a right mess and I could all I could picture was me on the news <laughs> this ultra runner had to go and rescue her today but yeah no it frightened me a lot and I'm I hate getting lost I'm I'm, I'm terrible I mean even road you know like I've done the canals and I got lost on them so you know I, I have no inner compass which is not great um but obviously the canals are easier to navigate than over there so I started off I'd wrecked most of the route um started off like okay, okay just just aim for 60 miles a day that's you know if I can get three miles an hour we you know I can walk three miles an hour it's not a problem then it started one sort of running off and I always run off fast um because I don't like being huddled I don't like being squished or you know so um I got lost I think I got lost three or four times within the first before the first checkpoint and the, the last time I was just I phoned me so I was like Mate, I'm lost. And he's like, well, where are you? And I said, well, I don't know. I don't know where I am. And he's like, what can you see? And it's like, I don't know, some house. <laughs> and he's like, I'm like, I can't deal with this. I'm like, I'll melt down. <laughs> um, and then luckily I just sort of turned around. There's some runners like, oh my God, I'm, I'm going, I'm going. I'm going to follow them. So I'd sort of stay with people. But I was like, in my head, it's like, I have to stop this. This is just dangerous because this is daylight and I am getting lost what am I going to do at night and I'm like oh my gosh so um yeah that first bit I wasn't in a good way um I think there's a picture of me with um is it Chris and he's giving me a big hug <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm just like just like you know I can't explain I was just totally done <laughs> was I did enough and then I thought do you know what I've got to do at least 60 miles and then I was um um Steve was gonna come and meet me to run with me in the evening um at the third checkpoint um yeah third checkpoint first sleep station and um and I messaged him saying look don't bother I I, I can't do this when I get to Crick Howell I am gonna just be polite you know don't worry he's going he's messaged back but you're doing really good and I'm like honestly I, I'm I can't do this the, I'm gonna get to dark and then I got another night of dark on my own and probably another night of dark you know I have three nights of darkness on my own and he's like, no, no, it's fine. Well, I didn't look at my phone then. And then I got to the sleep station you know, and then he's there. I'm like, oh man, I can't let him down now. He's come all this way to run through the night with me. So um, I went in and of course that time I'm, not, I'm a night worker. Everyone else is really hanging. I'm like coming into my own. I'm like, you know, I'm like raring to go like a kid on Smarties and I go, shh, I'm like, oh, sorry, sorry. And I'm like, so just went straight back out got through the night um, and then I'm thinking, he's going, right, I'm off now. And I'm thinking, oh my God, how am I going to do this? How am I going to do this? You know, like I'm going to get lost. I'm going to get lost. Um, and luckily at the that fourth checkpoint, I met um, Ed. Oh my gosh, what a life said. He wasn't going to run anymore. Um, his feet were quite bad and he was just waiting for someone to say, no, you know, like the medics to say, no, don't bother. And and they said, well, you said, well, I've seen myself. Like, I'll walk with you. I said, we can walk. It doesn't matter. And, you know, three miles an hour, I think if I hate it. And he's like, oh, oh, I'll try walking. Well, within about a mile or two, we were both running. So, you know, just sort of yeah. trotting along. So I stayed with him for the rest of the race. But um, we had a friend meet us at checkpoint seven. And we were, well, before we got there, we got to the old um, mining the caving centre? Yeah. Oh, my. So well, I've not been asleep at this point, really. Um, I think he's had a bit of a nap. And we're both wandering around, getting a bit lost. And he's going, I think when we get to the checkpoint, we need to have a sleep. And I'm like, what? And he's like, the stones? I went, oh. He says, they're starting to look weird. I said, yeah. And me, honest to God, they look like pandas. And you know, the caving centre, they're everywhere. It's just pandas everywhere. And you're like, oh, dear. <laughs> but you know it's not real don't you 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 absolutely know they're not real but 
but they look like pandas. And he's like, yeah, it's time for another night. So I think I had about 50 minutes there. Yeah. Um, and then got up and buzzed on and got lost a little bit. But I just like saying to him, oh, you know, when you get to the top of here, the views are amazing. We get to the top and it's misty. <laughs> There's Couldn't nothing to be seen thing. here. Or I was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Bless yeah. him. But yeah, no, we we done really well. We met with Tina. Um, I can't remember where that was now. But that was checkpoint seven. And um, oh my god, she was a lifesaver. We were both sort of tired. The navigation was, you know, mine was non-existent anyway. Um, and she was just like, come on, let's go, let's go. And we're like, what? Just we didn't have to think, which was yeah. the first time I didn't have to think, oh, you know, I was like, oh, man, this is such a relief. And she just kept us going. It was, like, really cool to have, like, a buddy runner. And for that long, she had 50 old miles with us as well. So just absolutely unreal. We It was quite, a, we had a bit of a ball, really, at some points. And, you know, not at other points, not really. But, yeah, well, it, was all, it was all good. <laughs> so your encouragement to add got you to it yeah <laughs> basically <laughs> see it was an ulterior motive to me to waste well, because he said he dnf last year and i'm like just just walk it just try you you know you never know and he's like well and then, then when they said to him like oh, i've seen worse and he's like oh. so he got one he even had to so he had to get some new socks because he'd gone through every single pair of his socks Ooh. and re-sport him a pair and left him at the um next checkpoint got there as soon as he got them on and we went back out he got into a bog or something and they were <laughs> minging again got to the um i think it was checkpoint eight and it is you know he's like really about his feet so he borrowed a pair of my socks <laughs> my friend said to him do you want to pull your socks up a bit he said i can't the shells so he don't go up that far <laughs> literally just covered the bottom of his feet bless him but he, he got there to the end wow bloody hell that's, yeah, fuck care is a big one in that I learned that in uh, in Epona. I wasn't too bad in fairness. Mine were pretty good in comparison, but that's because I think I spent the time in the checkpoints. It's important. A lot of people just want to, like, obviously just go straight through and try and crack on. But it's 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 so easy when you start to feel that sting to just go, oh, that's fine. Like, I can't bother to take my stock. It's just, I'll just push on. It's so easy to ignore it, especially when you're so tired and you just, want to keep moving and, and yeah I made that mistake a few times but by the end of it I was just stopping at every checkpoint and giving them a good clean keeping them dry but yeah fuck do, it do you both reason. tape your feet up um, I started taping my feet up for my long runs because I know where um, I get the blisters so I just tape them up beforehand to avoid it I don't no, I never, I never have, and I, I, I've only been on one run since the opponent, and I've done a few other workouts and stuff, but. Um, I was. I did put a bit of tape around my little toes with the help of one of the volunteers. She had some of that um, fleecy web stuff, which is really good. Um, but I, I wrapped tape around my toes, and the volunteer just looked at me. I can't remember her name. Is it I think her name is. She looked at me and just went, take that off immediately. That's going to make it worse, because I just kind of wrapped it around so badly. It would have given me more blisters. Um, so she did it for me properly, but... Going forward, maybe, because I, I definitely feel a few hot spots now that I think are going to be reoccurring going forward. Um, my little toes took a battering. Like I lost, um, had a really bad blister over the, well, my left little toe. And um, it, it, it had hardened. It was like a callus. Um, and uh, I was picking it off the other day because it was causing me some grief. And when I picked it off, my toenail just came with it. Just pulled my toenail off. I didn't even know. I was like, well, that's a bit sore. And then stuck to the skin was my nail. So that was great. Uh, and my other one is jet black name, ready to come off. So, yeah, my feet took a battering. But um, What about you, Shell? Lost any toenails? Only when I was marathon training. No, never on an ultra. Wow. Huh. What shoes do you run in? Um, Hawkers. Mm. That's interesting. And Innovates for, um, for off-road. Okay, that's interesting. Because they're white, got white toe them. box. Did you find them white? That's white the toe box, I've, yeah. got, I've got one pair of mud claws, which I I tried on when they delivered, and I've never worn them since, because I put them on my feet, and it felt like someone was squeezing my feet. I didn't like them at all. They just, 
I, I went on a long run with a friend of mine and um, she was just dancing down the hills and I was slipping and sliding everywhere because the tread of my speed goats had basically worn. And um, I was like, what are you wearing? And he showed me the eight mil lugs on his mud claws. And I was like, I need me some of them. And they're still sat in the box. I've never uh, worn see, them. Mine ain't got barely any lugs. It's the sort of the, the mid ones. So they're sort of most trail, but obviously really muddy. They wouldn't be really great in the mud, but soon as the ground's a bit dry, I was like, yeah, I can pummel this. Otherwise, I will, would have worn the Merrells. So, um, mm. But, yeah, no, the Innovates, the, the toe box on mine are um, massive, which is really good because my toes are starting to curve over now because of the RA. So need that mm. extra little bit of room. But I don't tape. Um, the only thing I do do, if that makes sense, is um, well, I've got one foot big than ever, like everyone else, and one – and you, your feet swell. I mean, if you go up too many sizes, your the, your foot is in the wrong place in the shape of the shoe. So you can't go up too many sizes. So I always on on the back of one heel is I put um, a compede, mm. just in case. But I don't take. Case- um, I never. I've never really had an issue. I don't think. Um, I don't think I've had a blister or or anything. I just run and I think <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, I, do, I just I just run. haven't what? I just run, yeah you've never, and you've never had a blister no what no no if you think though my feet are quite tough in they? because I'm on my feet all the time at work mm. and I've been on my feet a, a lot of my life you know mm. my age so my my feet are tough as Iron as... shoes. <laughs> <laughs> what shoes? I don't know. <laughs> Tough as old leather. Yeah, basically. Yeah, um, I get. That's crazy, though. I mean, even so, I mean, from the where they're running after running the two hundreds and the hundreds and all the different, you know, when your feet get hot and they sweat and all that stuff. I mean, do you do you stop and do foot care at checkpoints then, or is it just if it ain't broke, I don't fix it. That's it... crazy. So Imagine. I can. I only changed um, my socks once on the 200 and it rained for the first two days. Can we swap feet? (laughs) I think they look quite weird on you and me with your big feet. I was going to say I've got a size 11 and a half like a hobbit. (laughs) I'd probably fall over because you... uh, What's the size of your feet? Three and a half. What? Yeah. <laughs> well, I go up to four and a half in my trainers. Well, that's the same. That's why you don't get blisters because you haven't got much foot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I got I got double and more. What you've wow, insane. Um, <laughs> what I wanted to ask about um, obviously we touched on earlier how you did the Wild Horse two hundred and it was in prep for the FKT. Not to bring it up, uh, might be a little <laughs> bit bitter about it, I'm sure. But uh, obviously you were due to do it uh, yeah. in June weren't you um, and you did start it yeah but for anybody who doesn't know uh, um, about Shell obviously you had to cut it short just under 100 miles um, we touched on this earlier on with Nathan as well about how obviously you suffer with heat a little bit yeah um, I, I read that it was a bit of heat exhaustion or potential heat stroke so can you tell us about what happened in those like first almost 100 miles and, and why it was why you had to withdraw from it <clears throat> Yeah, so basically, um, started off about past four in the morning. It was warm then, to be fair. I got out of the car with, put, you know, expect to wear me me windproof on just to, and it's like, oh my gosh, this is warm. Um, but you know, all the same, put it back, put me bag, and and off I trot, and it wasn't too bad. Um, and it wasn't too bad until about ten in the morning, and it got really, really close. There was no direct sunlight. It was just like really warm air. You know, when you get off the aircraft, I felt like that. And I'm like, mm. oh my gosh. So I'm taking on more drink. So I was supposed to have um, my um, crew was supposed to meet me every 50 miles just for a welfare check and top up. So my plan was to buy drinks on the way and and what have you and food and everything else. Um, I didn't want to carry too much. Um, I hate carrying stuff. Um you know, like wild horse. I felt like I was going to fall backwards all the time how much was in there. But <laughs> so I just sort of 
took what I needed to take in my backpack. Um, and on the way, I was lucky, like, um, there was a pub that was outside cleaning and let me fill up with water and use the loo and everything else. I was really quite lucky. Um, cyclists, what are you doing? And I'm like, they, oh, have you got any spare water? Yeah, yeah. So I was quite lucky in that respect. But um, I was getting really hot then. And um, I said, can you know, meet me at 30 with some drink? Um, so they met me at mile 30. And they're like, look, we'll meet you again at mile 50. Can you do another 20? I'm like, yeah, yeah. Um, and then it was like every 10. And then it was mm. like eight miles. And it's and I'm really struggling to just cool. I just could not physically cool down. Um, we stopped for about an hour at one point just to let myself cool down. Um, and then I got running again, running absolutely fine. And it's just running through the night and it's supposed to get cooler. And I was just getting hotter and hotter and hotter. Even, you know, when I was in the car, when I had the rest, my hands were soaking. It just, I was just absolutely pouring. And mm. and I'm like, my goodness. And I'm drinking and I'm drinking. And I'm the more I drink, the more I seem to sweat. And it was, oh my gosh. And then I started getting a bit of a headache and I'm thinking, do you know what? I just, I don't think I need to, I'm losing too much fluid. I can't get it in over this sort of period. And, I'm just going to end up being quite ill, I think. And I felt awful, you know, like my legs were amazing. You know, I felt like I could have ran for days, um, but just the heat just absolutely wiped me out. It just, you know, I met so many great people on the way as well. You know, oh, no, I've seen you on Instagram. I've seen you on Facebook. I'm like, oh, did you? <laughs> Embarrassing. But yeah, you know, I met a guy with a um, big moose top on. Uh, uh, um. <laughs> Oh gosh, one of the reservoirs, um, Penn Stick, is it Penn Stick? Well, oh, the Boat Tower yeah, yeah, Boat Tower and all that, yeah. 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 Okay. So they wow. were there. But a Taft Trail is is really nice until you get to the bit, you know, for Taliban, and it's just big grit and it, just big yeah. chunks of. Oh, my poor feet were like, what are you doing? You're supposed to be road running because <laughs> that's <laughs> what I am normally as a road runner. So I don't normally do trail. Well, I haven't wow. done in the past. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. But yeah, so... no, I had to pull it off. I just, it's just, I I didn't want to end my year doing nothing. You know, if I'd have carried on and give myself reds or something really nasty or, you know, ended up on a drip and being told off or, or whatever, I just didn't want to put myself in that position as where I wouldn't probably be able to run for the rest of the year or I would worry myself running for the rest of the year um yeah I just I just like to be able to keep running I've had to stop before for the 18 months which nearly killed me but mm. I don't want to be in that position again no you don't want to be nobody should risk their health or like um injuring yourself and prolonging any kind of for any longer period over a run is I mean yes it was exciting as FKT you built it up and everything but you know you were able to sometimes the, the hardest decision is to stop. I mean, it, it would be fool, foolish to continue because you don't know what would have happened if you carried on. You could have collapsed, you know, you would have been out in the middle of nowhere by yourself. It's, it's not worth it. But I mean, obviously, the big question then is have you got a new date? Are you planning on doing it again? And if so, when? Um, yeah, I will do it again. Um, I have to. <laughs> um, it, I will it probably be next year now and I will probably have to do it sort of a, a cooler time I think mm. I mean I don't mind the rain so if it's sort of like in the cold I'm quite good in the cold I work quite well in the bad weather I probably tend to work better in that weather than I do in the summer um so probably would look at sort of a February March sort of time maybe to to do it maybe in April see how the work holidays pan out <laughs> but mm. um yeah yeah definitely do it again um but you know it's just another learning curve but you, you know I think the longer you run for them the more you know your body and the more you learn and learn like you say the hardest bit is saying that I shouldn't be doing this but you know you shouldn't so it makes it an easy choice in reality yeah. <laughs> especially yeah. as it's well, gutting it's, it's just is what it is is what it is. You, you'll have uh, you'll have Nathan's time to beat whatever he tunes out now in the next month or so. You'll have him to beat. But I could literally finish it. Possibly, well, hopefully, get a record. 
and then two weeks later, um, Stephen takes it. <laughs> yeah, someone, yeah. someone's starting it just as I finish. Ooh, that would be. Can you imagine that? I mean, you could be the FKT holder for you know a couple of weeks and bask in it. But I mean, yeah. Well, well it's see. it's nice to win it. I mean, look at um, Running Monk Allen. I mean, he's he's so supportive with it. He's got the current FKT. It's lovely that we live in a world where the people are not bitter about it, and they're like, you know what? If you can beat it, let's do it. Like, I'll support you. It's good. It's nice. It's, it's healthy competition, isn't it? Um, not all sports are like that. So it's a great thing about trail running in this community. Um, yeah. Um, I was going to ask you what you would do differently next time, but you kind of answered that already, Sean, about doing it in a different uh, time of the year when it's maybe a bit cooler. Um, I would ask, about, do you know when you go into these long runs, do you have any kind of hydration or fueling plans? Like, is it something you're quite um, anal about, or do you just take what you're used to and just kind of um, have something every hour or wherever, or do you have, like, a plan? Um, so you're going to laugh now. Nice. So I take my bottles, sometimes an extra one in the back, um, with squash. <laughs> <laughs> just kitty squash. <laughs> have you worked out how many calories are in it? No, it's just sugar in it. <laughs> Um, no, um, I do, and I just pack food and sweets, and um, and my backup is some little chews by um, high fuel and hydration precision. I oh, can't precision oh, fuel precision, or whatever. The, precision. the little yeah. little chews, oh, they're fantastic. Yes, um, you know what? I need to back you up on that precision fuel and hydration. So I used them for the first time at the Epona. Yeah, I messaged them yesterday actually because. I don't know if you saw the recent post. There's um, somebody's using it to do the Tour de France or something coming up. And on their bike frame, he had literally a chart of like hour by hour of what gels and shoes to have. And I, yeah. I got into a conversation with them and I said to them, I, I have to say, those shoes were a game changer. They, they were just so, I don't, I haven't tried the lemon and lime ones. I have the normal ones and they were, they were so neutral. Mm. They, they weren't too sweet or too rich. They weren't hard to digest or chew. It was like a Turkish delight, but yeah. softer. And I, I honestly, I, they were the absolute game changers. So going forward, I will always have them on me as well. Do you know what? Really they are good. really good. You know, when you get the nausea and you can't oh, okay. eat or anything or anything else, you can pop them in. They don't make you sick. So you're getting your carbs in. They're fantastic right. for that. Um I've handed them out a few times. I th when I was on the wild horse, there was, um, oh, I can't remember her name now. She was um, in front of me for quite a bit and then sort of just one behind me. And I was like, where is she? Where is she? And he said, oh, she's sort of been feeling a bit sicky. So I left some there. I said, look, 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 she can't get nothing else down. Just get her to have these, you know. And they're like, really? Oh, no. Yeah, no, honestly. So hopefully they helped her. But um, yeah, they are really fantastic. Good. It's probably the best thing I've had. And it's the only unnatural thing I have on a run. I don't have gels. Oh, so I was going to come to that. When you said you have food and squash, did you take real food with you? Yeah. Yeah. What's yeah, your, I don't have... Your go -to? Um, anything, really. Sausage roll, steak steak slice. <laughs> <laughs> it's not nice when it's warm, though, when it's been in your packet a while. Um, jelly babies, um, jelly beans, um, anything. Oh, and licorice all sorts. Oh, my gosh. Licorice all sorts, <laughs> if you like them. Carbs. In a packet of liquid sauce or all sorts is massive. Really? Absolutely, yes. Wow. Okay, I didn't know that. And all in the thought. calorie and everything else is is amazing because you've got the sugar, you've got the carbs. It's there's so much in it. You'd be really gobsmacked. I picked up a so for the um, two hundred, you had to have a minimum of thousand calories um, on you for the race, and I just took a bag of liquid all sorts. So I had other bits and bobs because I like to eat. Um, but they, yeah, they were my thousand calorie backup. And the carbs in them was just ridiculous amounts. It's more than you've got in a protein shake or anything like that, you know? It's just what really yeah, gotta go look yeah. into that now. Nathan, we need to get the stats up on this because that's this is I love these little moments. See, these are the little golden nuggets I got from like a couple of episodes ago. Someone said about rice crispy squares, and so I was like, What? Like, and they and someone said apparently, I don't know if you've heard of. Uh, is it Morton, the, the bars? Yeah. They, they're expensive. But, no, what was the one that you gave me, Nate? Was that Morton? Yeah, that Rice Krispie one? Striker. No, Striker. Yeah, the Striker bars, they're like um, 
that apparently somebody said in the Apollo group they are identical to Rice Krispie Squares, like identical, but whereas you can pick up a Rice Krispie Square, like a pack of three for three quid, but the the striker ones are like bloody 25 quid for a pack or something, but they're yeah. exactly the same and they have so many grams of carbs in them, but it didn't, it didn't do me well. Like the first Rice Krispie Square I had, I was like, oh, this is magic. Why have I not done this before? And then by about three or four, I was spitting it out. I was like, all I can taste is sugar. I am so mm. fed up with this. And it's funny because when I emptied my bag the other day, I got about 10 still left in my bag in little Ziploc bags. So <laughs> we were using it for snacks for work now instead. <laughs> um, but one, one thing you I picked up and you said then, Shell, and that I'm going to try going forward is Greg sausage rolls. A few people have said it. Um, I think I have to give it a go because – Cold or hot, it doesn't matter. They are amazing. Mm. I reckon they'll do a good job. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Um, and it's just easy. It's just, you know, even if they get a bit mushed in the bag, it doesn't matter. You know, it's just... <laughs> <laughs> you just get, like, mushy pastry, you know? <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. And you've got the salt in there as well, you know. I don't take any salts. Um, I used to think, because I do get hot and I do sweat excessively, I was concerned about my salts because um, someone said I was getting nauseous because of the salt, blah, blah, blah. So I did have a sweat test. Um, mm. And I, considering how much I sweat, I barely lose that much salt, which is mm. which is good. So I'm quite lucky on that front. So hence, as long as I keep drinking my juice. Yeah. Um, and then my protein that. shakes is the Mars drinks. Ooh, well, the, the thick chocolatey ones. Yeah. They've got protein, quite a lot of protein in them, haven't they? Don't you, they make you feel sick, though, when you're running? Oh, no, no. when I get, you know, when you're stopped, I don't drink, oh, I don't drink protein whilst on the run. Can you imagine drinking oh, milk? You're in, right, so. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, it goes like blancmange. Oh. <laughs> oh. <in> the heat. <laughs> Chewed up steak, bacon, and, and, and <laughs> mars, like... Oh God, God, man. Yeah, yeah, I did. Um, I've told this story a few times. One of the um, when I did Edam last year, one of the guys at the checkpoint pulled in, took a can of Guinness out of his bag, necked it, put a can in the bin, carried on. Can't fault yeah. me. I mean, <laughs> it was a, it was a hot. No, it wasn't a hot day. It was a miserable day. But yet, yeah, this uh, relatively is probably quite warm actually. But I suppose there's lots of iron and stuff in those. I'm not sure it would be a recommendation for people, but I'm not sure it'd even be legal in some races but yeah it was <laughs> it was uh it was funny to see yeah um, i know some people that have it after to put yeah. all the nutrients back in um mm. it's not my it's more of a, a liquid lunch isn't it it's it's quite um what's Heavy. The <laughs> quite chewy drink in there yeah. it's not Ugh. something <laughs> there's a lot of them but i always have a beer at the end of my races always Same. yeah first thing yeah. i have yeah, I'd, when I'd done the cot for, and they said, do you want a cup of tea, hot chocolate, do you want coffee? I'm like, no, just get me a beer. And they're like, what? Yeah. <laughs> and someone come off and go, i got one of my van and brought it back. And it did get tweeted, yeah. actually. <laughs> and like, to the company, yeah. it got retweeted quite a few times. Like, oh, my gosh, how embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> my coach's like, were you drinking again? <laughs> That's, um, my my dad's only thing was be at the finish line and have a bottle of beer for me. So we had a can of freezing cold doom bar for me when I crossed the opponent and it was, oh, it's the most magical taste. <laughs> really was. Love it. Um, it was only one time I couldn't drink and that was I'd done the Grand Union Canal Race and any run I've ever done, I've always had a beer afterwards and, and I just got to a point and my daughter, I met my daughter in the last 10 miles and she's like, come on, keep going, you can have your beer. I'm like, I really don't think i could drink a beer and like, what <laughs> and i didn't i just i just couldn't was, surprising you, but that was really the, hot then as well so <laughs> you broke the tradition shall the start of the year you took part in the arc of attrition mm. how mm. was that for you horrific absolutely <laughs> horrific it was my first proper <laughs> trail race and it was the arc of attrition. And I watched, like, I signed up, um, didn't make, you know, the cut. So um, I then get an email, I think it was November, saying that um, you're on the reserve list. There's a place if you want it. And I'm like, oh, do I, don't I? And I've done a bit with me mate, um, Sai. 
used to go out with him every weekend on a bit of a jolly and everything else. So I'm like, oh my gosh. And I thought, so I messaged him. He's like, yeah, I got one as well. I was like, all right, we'll do it. We'll do it together. So I'm like panicking anyway, because like my navigation is terrible. Um, <laughs> it's, it's an understatement. So that's when I went on the recce and got um, terribly lost. Um, yeah, and it frightened the life out of me. Um, I went back down afterwards and done the last part of the race to, to recce it. And that wasn't too bad, but then I was with someone on that. Um, um, on the race, I was really like, what have I done? I just, oh, my God. There's all these people looking like pros. There's, <laughs> you know, like it's me, like, oh, do I need poles? Do I not need poles? Do I not? And I thought, well, put, put me in my drop bag. I, I don't know. And um there's all these like people like and I'm like, oh my God. And 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 I'm sort of running along the road bit and I'm all right on road. I can go like a rocket, but as soon as you've got the off-road, I'm like Bambi on ice, like doo -doo -doo. and then I twisted my ankle and it's like, oh my gosh. And then I'm limping along. Oh, honest to God, I have I thought, God, I got to the first checkpoint and I felt okay. And I'm like trying to I'm an in and out on a checkpoint. I because if I stop, I start to seize up. So I get in, I get out. So I went in, got my headlight, head torch on, and um, started to head out again. And you're trying to keep up with other people's because everyone has to wear a light on their back. Mm. You have to have a flashing light on your back. So it was nice because you could see people for miles, like red lights, blobbing all the way along the side of the coast. It was amazing, actually. So I always felt okay in that respect until I got to the third quarter if I'd have recce that bit, I wouldn't have done the race. <laughs> I was. What was so animated? Boulders. Oh. Boulders. I had the only off-roading I'd done is like going at the fans and stuff, you know? So nothing technical. And I get to this bit and it's like 20 miles of it. And I and I and I'm just like, where's the path? And then people go by me and they're climbing over these boulders. And I'm like, what? And and it's like I'm small, and then I couldn't jump down. <laughs> oh my god! And you're quite close to the edge, and I'm like, oh, don't look down, don't look down, and get a bit of vertigo. And I'm like, what am I doing? And I'm right, a next checkpoint. That's it. I've had enough. I've had enough. And I got to the next point. I'm like, I've enough. No, no, no. You've got the last bit. It's the easiest bit. And I'm like, no, no. And he's going like, come on, have you done it? But I'm like, yeah. And he's like, it is easy, isn't it? I'm like, yeah. But you know what? I'm so traumatized by that race. <laughs> but I. It, <laughs> What Just time did you finish it in? 32 hours. What difference was that? Was that 100? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was so quite traumatic for me. I just, it's, I'm so, really glad I'd done it. But, how did you pull yourself through it then? Um, I don't really know. The mate I was running with pulled out after about a few miles. So I was just sort of, I don't know what pulled me through it. I have... No idea. Um, sort of having words with myself, remembering why I'm doing it, which I couldn't. It that point through the boulders, I just, I was just like, I need to get to the end of this point because I'm just sat on these stones for half of it and just didn't know what I was doing. Just sort of sat there. I even cried. I mean, I'm not an emotional person on a race at all. Even when I finish, I don't cry or anything like that. I'm not, <laughs> and I'm on these stones crying like and at myself like what have you done to yourself and I'm like but I don't know I just you know I, I got to move I got to move and just kept moving and then when I got the last check when they said look you can walk it in just do it and I'm like okay I can walk it and I've done this route and it's not too bad so um I literally just started I, it was all right actually I got out and I started running um because obviously 100 miles is is you know all right um but I just it's just running and um and I remembered like certain bits I'd done I'd done it in the winter and it was absolute bog mess you know like horrific before and I'm like oh my gosh oh my gosh what am I going to be sort of facing but there was it's like dry as a bone and I'm like okay it's just like running on a path you know and it, and it was it was all right it was up from the hills were I mean going uphill I'm a savage going downhill I'm terrible <laughs> I can get up a hill, like people fly past me downhill, get to the hills going up, and I'm going by them. And that's just me, like, mar do my mum march. You know, when you're late for school and you've got your kids in tow, and yeah. you've got to get, you're a bit late, and you say, 
come on, come on, kids. And you do that in my march. We'll have march. And I just do that. And I have a song in my head when I go up hill as well. So, like, you know, to keep me moving at the same rate all the time, you know, just any random song comes in my head and I'll keep my feet moving to that. But I don't know what pulled me through that. I just know I did hallucinate a little bit on that one, but I knew it, it wasn't horrific. It was just like some of the bushes looked like people sat there looking at me. But when I finished and I went to go and have a shower, I, I got in the shower and I got out and and I'm going across the grass to the um, the van, but they look like stones because of the boulders and I'm lifting my legs up onto things that weren't even there. It was quite bizarre. But <laughs> would I do it again? Never. If if I had any advice mm. for anyone would be, if you're going to wreck it, wreck that third quarter because that's the well, technical bit. Yeah. And if you can't do, you do that remember? bit, then... Have you ever had, I know you've got five children, they're all older now, are any of them in the running? Have any of them ever offered to pace you or come along on any of these you? Um, no, my kids crew me quite often. Um, they're going. They, two of them crewed for the FKT last minute and they're, uh, I think one of them, I think maybe two in August are crewing me and in September... I'm not sure he's creaming me on that one yet, but they tend to cream. My daughter likes to run, um, hmm. but I think she's may attempt her first proper ultra this year. She done a backyard ultra with me. We had hmm. a ball. She absolutely loved it. And Redding and Jaw. She really enjoyed Redding and Jaw. Um, right. She did it with me the second time I'd done it. She absolutely loved it. She, she, wow. Just the camaraderie of, you know, because no one you're just going around and there's no no pressure on time or, or yeah. pace because you, you you do you do a marathon people like, what's your time what's your time what time do you do it in you do like oh i've just run 100 miles what what all in one go did you stop overnight did you sleep in a hotel and it's like did i sleep in a hotel? oh yeah and i had a spa you know <laughs> no it's, it's, no one ever asked you that they just it's just you know and 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 it's that's why i pulled away from you know the marathons um he, yeah. I was a good for age runner, so um it, it's always about time and pace and and I just it just kind of killed me off a little bit. Um it weighs you down a bit, doesn't it? When you when you're just clock watching and, and, and just like constantly looking at zones and heart rates and pace and stuff. We've spoken about this a lot since starting this. Um, and, and you, when you move away from that into the, the world of trail running or ultras, it just becomes more about like like the process, like enjoying it, than mm. just just stat watching, statistic watching. Because when you're doing your five k's, your ten k's, your halves, blah blah blah, you're going on Strava, you're checking the segments, who's the king, and then you're like, oh bastard, they took it off me, and then you get so competitive. Whereas in an ultra, it's just like. It's just really fun. Like you said, even in the FKT, you know, you didn't complete it, but how many people did you meet along the way? Like you ask a marathon runner if they were in New York, London, doesn't matter. Ask them at the end. If they were trying to get a PB, ask them what they saw around them and see what they said. They'd be like, I don't know, head down. Just I was going, I was trying to get to the finish line. But you ask someone on a 50 mile or a 30 mile trail run what they saw and they could tell you a story. It's, um, I think it's just a difference and each to their own. Don't get me wrong. I, I have a huge amount of admiration for the people who do those five tens and, you know, sub three hour, sub two hour marathons. Huge amount of admiration for them. But, um, yeah, I think it, it, it's just, it completely changes the dynamic of the run, doesn't it? Yeah, because anyway, it's awesome. competition, isn't it? It's, <laughs> it's, it is competition, isn't it? You, you, you're always watching the next person. You're, you, it's it's hard, and if you if like if I went out for a slow run, <laughs> people go, "Oh, are oh, you injured then?" <laughs> it's like, no, I'm just I'm just having a jolly. <laughs> Is that yeah. all right? Was you running with someone? And I try not to put people, you know, like if you are running with someone, it's like really cruel, and I felt really bad. And then it got to a point I got quite fast, and and I say, "Anyone up for a run?" And I'm like, "No, would want to run with me anyway." <laughs> so I ran exactly a lot on my own. So. That's what um what happened to Nathan a few weeks ago when he ran with Larry and Joel killed him off. <laughs> Ruined me. Speaking of segments, though, 
Did you see that um, Nathan Hutton had um, local legend round um, back of Garth or Forest Vower? I was raging. Oh, he was won. The, he, he won Wild Horse. Oh crikey! Gosh, yeah, it's like Nathan. a rocket. Yeah, he he yeah. So he's taken over local legend around Forest Vower and the Garth. Okay. I'm thinking, how the fuck is that possible? I'm up there like every day, like doing yeah. loops up there. And then I dawned, it dawned on me that I haven't been putting my stuff on Strava, have I? Have you not? No. You've been hiding it? I have. <laughs> uh, I don't bother. I just, I mean, it is what it is. It hides you now, which is better. I mean, I've blocked people before um, for making stupid comments and, um, and, and you know, um, I got one race that I won. Um, someone commented cheat. Oh. <laughs> yeah. uh, see, um. <laughs> I'd use that. I'd use that as ammunition, and I just I do what that Andrew Glaze does, and just say, let's see what my haters are saying this week. And <laughs> yeah. just like chat shit about them. I like that. I mean, I've been off Strava for a while now. I've, I've, I'm going to go back on the night just because. I got to a point where I realised I didn't really, I didn't need it. Like, I mean, I'm still logging the. I didn't even know you could hide your runs, by the way. So is that a thing? Yeah, I didn't yeah, know yeah you could hide that. them. Yeah. No, I didn't know that. It's not. It's not a bait after me. I still use my Garmin, but at the end of the run, I'll just delete it off my watch. I know what I've done, and I do. I feel like, well, I don't really need everybody else to see it. Like the whole joke, if it's not on Strava, it didn't happen. It didn't but, happen. Yeah. But with the really big runs, like I want them on there so I can look at. You know, you know, steps and I don't know various other things and what have you. But yeah, I, I'm not. Um, I don't know. It's one of those I like it I've for the for. data. Um, mm. I like the data that I see. You know, and I think you know when you've had that run and it's oh god, that was a slog. I was going really slow, and you get back and it's like okay, it wasn't slow. <laughs> it's like oh, what was that all about? You know, or you think you've gone really fast, you get back and it was like okay, I was only sort of like. Eight minute thirty. Okay, that felt like you know I was really pushing myself. Perhaps I wasn't. <laughs> you know, it's just it's really weird, and it all goes on mood as well. I find. Yeah. I've woke up, you know, like and I'm like chilled and whatever, and I'll go for a run. I tend to run better than if I've got a planned and right, I'm going to do this. I tend to run pants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what we've spoken about before. If I if I leave the house going right, I'm going to get a sub twenty minute five k today. I'll never get it. I never, I've never got it to this day, I, what I have once, but it was when I wasn't planning on it. I just went mm. out on a run and I thought, I feel really quick. Got two miles in, got two and a half miles in. I was like, okay, I'm not slowing down, so I'll, I'll just go for a PV. But if if I set out and I stretch and I warm up and I prepare myself to get that, I just, I don't know what it is mentally. I just, I put too much pressure on myself. And it's the same with, when you look at data and stuff like that, I mean, Jenks is, is the boy, one of the, he's, a good friend of ours, big runner, and he's been on the podcast a few times. He's he's mad for heart rates and things like that. But then that data can be skewed so easily when you factor in lack of sleep or stress, or if you've had a bad day, or you know anything. It can all factor it. So I, I, that's one thing I've never paid attention to. Like I'll do a run and he'll be like, "Oh mate, you're in zone two in there," and I'm like, "What does that mean? I don't care." Like I felt good. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> like... No, I don't. I don't know. I mean, I don't know if it's relevant or not. I suppose my heart rate, obviously my resting heart rate is really no low since I have been running so much. You know, I've mm. gone into hospital and they're like, are you feeling all right? <laughs> and it's like, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. And then they're like, are you sure? And I'm like, yeah, yeah. And they're like, okay, so you're sort of 40 beats a minute. And it's like, okay. And then someone yeah. goes, are you an athlete? <laughs> What well, sort yeah. of a runner? How oh, are you? Yeah. How far do you run? And I say, and I'm like, hmm, you what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, no, it's cool. I mean, probably, yeah, their heart answer rate probably... isn't a thing for me because I used to have my heart rate was after when we had the COVID jabs, I had an allergic reaction because um, the RA sort of attacked because it's seen an infection, so went overdrive. And my heart rate um, when I ran was over 200 beats per minute. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. And then, and then you sort of start seeing specialists and stuff. And it's just, oh, it's just, you know, one of those things. But no matter what I'd done, even like if I wasn't, if I was going a real gentle run, it'd still be over 200 beats per minute. So I never fully trust a heart because I felt all right. Um, mm -hmm. And you say that now, like at the end of a race, I have to normally lie down 
because as soon as I stop, my blood pressure drops really, my heart rate drops really quickly. So mm. then I tend to go out cold. <laughs> so, you know, it's normally when I've ran really fast, like over the 200, it was none of it was really fast. So it's, you know, by the end, we, we, we did run the end. Um, probably the last 16, we ran quite well. But um, yeah, no, it was, you know, because your heart rate's quite low anyway. You sort of try and keep my heart rate below 100 before I mm. stop was otherwise I stop very quickly and then I'm not great being picked up off the no. floor or legs up in the air and it's not pretty. That's what they say, don't they? I, I do that a lot. There's a picture of me. I found a great picture. Uh, I'll send it over to you, no, Nate. You'll have to put it on here, like when you do it on the YouTube. Um, at Checkpoint 6, uh, <laughs> I, I, I was out of it. I couldn't remember I'd done it, but I saw it the other day. It made me laugh. The checkpoint six coming out of the night section and I was just like a zombie and I just wanted to lay down and put my legs up in the air but for whatever reason that checkpoint were having serious issues with midges like everyone was getting bitten it was really bad and um so I led down there's a picture of me with my feet up on the rock but I put a harrier buff on and pulled it over my face and then put my hat on top and I'm led down with my legs up on this rock and it looks like a mannequin it didn't look like it's me it looks fake it's hysterical it's a great picture and everyone's like why? And it's because I, I don't care if they bite me, I just don't want them going in my mouth. <laughs> no, <come on. laughs> so I was totally like, I was almost gone, I was almost dead to the world. But yes, yeah, uh, legs up, they say, don't they? They say to do that the night before as well, apparently, like just for like 20 minutes, just feet up. I don't know the signs behind it, but um, it's to get yeah, fresh blood into your muscles. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. It really? does work for me. So I, there must be some it really good behind it i don't know and the swelling obviously because where you're constantly upright the swelling all the fluid and everything goes down to your legs when you elevate it takes that swelling out a little bit as well and that's mm, another reason i don't change shoes or socks is because my feet swell and if i get the shoes off they ain't going back on <laughs> yeah that's um yeah that's that's what helped with my feet after because my first hundred my feet was the biggest problem was the swelling the yeah. biggest problem there's not a lot i can deal with whatever but my the swelling of them they got really bad and i worked from home so i was trying to keep them raised and at night i was putting my my wife's got a yoga bolster thing and we put that on the end of the bed and i was raised my feet up on that and the difference it made when i was waking up in the mornings to before i did it it's like i had nutty professor feet i've got big trotters anyway so uh if it, it was it was a nightmare trying to get socks on and stuff like that but um, no, the, the joys of running, the joys of these things that we do, eh? Yeah. <laughs> so so what's next like for you now, then, Shell? Sorry? What's next for you now? Um, I don't like to say too much. Um, <laughs> I've got um, a 24-hour um, event and a backyard ultra, which I absolutely, I love backyard ultras. I've not done enough of them. Um, they are such a jolly. I have a, I have a ball, which is... It's just you go around the same people. I don't. I know I'm not going to get lost. There's people <laughs> ways to follow. <laughs> yeah, you know, and it's, it's such good fun, and everyone shares because you're all going back to the same point every time. You wander around, someone saying, "Oh, you know, I got this. Oh, I got this in my bag. If you want it, you know, help yourself." Yeah. And they're like, "Really?" I'm like, "Yeah." And they go, "Oh, anyone got this?" Like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." So it's it's just such a shareathon, and obviously the people that are really really good want more people there so they can go further because you can only go as far as the the second person as, as you like so yeah. it's it's quite cool i i i love it that the camaraderie on that is is fantastic and when someone's oh you know i'm gonna ring the bell no 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 keep going keep going and you make them do one more it's just it is fab i do i do really really enjoy them and wish i'd done a few more really but um yeah yeah, that's, I'm time. Not, yeah time. One, one more this year and then hopefully the cop form 200 See, I'm going to see how I feel. That that is brutal. That was 26, 22,000 meters elevation. What? Uh, over a hundred miles. Yeah. Wow. Christ. Yeah, that was that was brutal. I have. That was worse than the arc for elevation. I'm I'm intrigued with all these crazy things that you do. I'm intrigued what your what a bucket list would be for you, like. Any race in the world, if someone said, "No, I got a, I got a, uh, you know, briefcase full, full of money, or I'll pay for your travel and everything anywhere in the world," what what would you do, run wise? No, 
Um, I'd like to do UTMB, um, but I don't fancy running Snowden to do it. I'm not going to lie because it's quite technical, so and I get lost anyway. Um, I don't know. I'd fancy something in the States, one of their 200s, I think. I'm not sure which mm. one, but I'd fancy something like that. Go down a 250. That's what you want to do. Yes. The big one. I have seen, but they got to go across water and stuff, haven't they? So that's not for yeah. me. <laughs> I, I, I'm not. I'm not a strong swimmer. I'd probably get take a downstream, knowing my luck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, that's interesting. Uh, favorite running trail. Hocker. Favorite running trail. I quite like Saint Ishtids, so. Fair. Um, music or no music whilst you're running? Race, I have no music. When I'm running on my own, I have music. Okay, so go to artists then when you're running, when you're training. Dodgiest music ever, 80s. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favourite post-race meal? Post-race? Got to be liquid, hasn't it? It's got to be a beer. <laughs> 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 and a packet of crisps. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, I tell you what. Go. Favorite flavor crisp. Cheese and onion. Oh, yes, that's mine. Yes. Get in. <laughs> that's my absolute go-to. I love crisp, but that's my that's my like golden standard. Cheese and onion. And there we go. That was it. It's just a stupid little game I like doing and <laughs> trying to learn a little bit more about you. But yeah, nice one, them, Chad, for coming on. Though this this has been it's been really cool to chat to you. And um, like I said, I've I've never met you or spoken to you before. And um. It's really good to get to know you and all the things you've done and the things you've got coming up. Um, wish you nothing but the best with any other runs and hopefully the next FKT, you'll get it. You'll do it. There'll mm -hmm. be no issue. But, Lovely. Um, you have to keep us posted. Will do, definitely. Cool. And obviously, Nathan, if you're my area on your coastal path and need a buddy, give us a shout. I think I'm there uh, end of July, 1st of July. You have, like have you got your tracker? No, um, I'm going to go with the links. That's if you go on FKT, um, they give you apps to follow because I can use Strava to sort of like share my location. Yeah, so people can follow me that way. It and drains then, your battery, mind. I, I Absolutely got, um, sabotages your yeah, battery. I, I got um, um, well, they're charging points anyway. Yeah, I have two battery mm -hmm. packs I'm taking with me. Um, and I'll use, I'll use these apps then they've given me to actually like form the GPS file for all of it. I'm uh, just going to stick to so I got my phones in my watch now. Yeah, with the map on it. Yeah. <laughs> you wearing your glasses? <laughs> well, I am going to take them actually, to be honest, in my backpack. Just I lost case. my pair on them, the Wild Horse 200. <laughs> That's all oh, you need. <laughs> I couldn't see it. Oh, I can't see me watching the rest of the time. So, yeah, when the, like when I went to my pocket, it's like, oh no, oh dear. It's like, oh dear. If I do, if I do have to my own, I'm going to get lost again. But yeah, I did an extra twenty four miles on that one. So, oh my god, <laughs> I seem disgusting. I still gave me first email. <laughs> it's bad, isn't it? I beat the course yeah. record as well for the female by ten, is it ten or twenty minutes? Oh, I think as well. <laughs> so it'd been a couple of hours if you didn't get lost. I know. I Do you know what? I was quite I savage when I thought about it afterwards, but like at the time, I didn't really know what was going on until I think the eighth checkpoint. Someone had said like you are quite a way in front. I'm like, what? <laughs> My, the the girl I was running with was like going, don't tell her anything, don't tell her anything, because I don't like to know because I don't want the pressure and I don't want. But and when I was looking at the time, what time it was, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, because I was headed for 82, 84 hours. I had in my head if I walked the whole thing in three miles an hour, it would have been sort of like 82, you know, so 72 hours walking and sort of 10, 12 hours of um, rest time, you know, when I stop and go in and out of all the things. That, and that's how I've done it in my head logically. But, um, yeah, no, when it's sort of like, is it checkpoint eight? And it was it was like 50-odd hours. I'm like, what? 
<laughs> what? <laughs> so I knew then it was going to be a good time, but um, it wasn't, you know, I didn't realise how until, you know, the last checkpoint. I think, oh, my God, I'm going to smash my, 80, you know, 84. I'm going to be looking at sort of 68 hours. So. You'll have to go back next year and beat it no. again. <laughs> no. Do you know what? I've, there's something I don't do is revisit races. I try not to. Um, even if I've done well, it's it's um, yeah, <clears throat> I've had a couple of instances where you turn up a race and people's Googled you and stuff. Really? Yeah, I had one race. It was it wasn't like oh yeah, she's gonna win it. She's gonna do this. She's gonna do that. And it's like oh my gosh, please don't, please don't. And everyone's looking at yeah. I turned up to the race camp and someone said, oh, that's going to be the first female. Mm. And it's like, guys, I don't do trail running. Have you seen me on the trails? I'm like Bambi on ice, but yeah, it's that's the nice. pressure. It's, it's not nice, but, you know, I'm always honest when people say, well, you know, what have you done? What have you done? I always I always tell people, but um, yeah. I don't <laughs> quite like being um, Googled or Strava stalked um, nice. as it was. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I look forward to see what you're doing in the future. Oh, I won't Google or Strava stalk you. I'll, I'll just message you on Instagram instead. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I'll let everyone know. We're a bit nearer the time. I don't like to. Um, uh, oh, I don't know. I'm just. I am revisiting a race, um, but it's not a race for me. It's going back to family. It's where it all began. So. You know, so um, nice, exciting. Yeah, yeah, looking forward to it. Yes. Okay. Well, yeah. Please keep us updated. I'm sure you'll posting on your Instagram when everything's planned. But um, yeah, we'll let you. We'll let you get on with your evening night. But thank you so much again for coming on. Shout out to people. An absolute pleasure. And, thank um, you for having me. <laughs> thank you for coming on. You've made us laugh. It's been really cool and interesting, and good to hear hear your story and and where you're going from here. So yeah, thank you again. Thank you very much. No worries. Take yeah, care, thanks, guys. Sean. Good Hope luck, Nathan. Let about... us know if you um need anybody yeah. running. Hope to see you in about four weeks then. No worries. Take care. <laughs> uh, Cheers, Joe. Take care. Bye bye. Quite um insane. So like how she's just so naturally fit. Yeah, it's kind of like. Um, it's almost freakish when she's saying arrest and heart rate was 40 when she runs it's like 200 plus yeah after covid and stuff yeah it's weird that's nuts but incredible really really cool though and nice lady as well really nice lady yeah, yeah. good to chat with her nice honest as well like like kind of like nathan like does everything wrong but still fuck, like run an extra almost marathon and still fucking took first female what's that all about i know Mental. crazy Jesus. Right. And that's it. Thank you ever, ever so much to everybody who listened. Um, it was an absolute pleasure talking to Shell. Hope you all enjoyed it. As always, thank you so much to anyone who's tuned in previously, listened, subscribed, and uh, to any of the previous episodes. We've got some amazing guests coming up. We really have. Uh, me and Nathan are both taken aback by, by the, uh, the reaction we've had to this and the people who've agreed to even come on and speak to us so uh yeah keep listening for some more amazing episodes and just a final good luck to everyone who's taken on the pigum this weekend uh i know a few of those people did the opponent and you gotta go back up the sugar loaf mm. <laughs> so enjoy that <laughs> i will be thinking of you and laughing secretly but enjoy it guys and um yeah thanks ever so much for tuning in again cheers guys cheers guys bye Oh, <laughs>